Let's take a look back at some of my older Bionicle mocks. Now these date back to like either late 2011 to early 2012, so they're fairly old at this point. But let's see if they hold up by today's standards. All of these creations today are going to be Dark Hunter themed. The Dark Hunters were the bounty hunters, the thieves, the warriors of the Bionicle universe. They were cool characters. So let's check them out. Let's kick things off with a revamp of the Shadowed One that I built way back when. Uh, so the Shadowed One, if you're not familiar with them, they're the leader of the Dark Hunters. They're a really cool character, they're very powerful. There's a lot of lore for them in the Bionicle universe. Uh, now they do have an official model. Uh, it looks a little something like this. It is a combo model, however. But I always thought it was odd that he had that kind of like three leg kind of tripod design. I've seen a lot of debate online of people saying, no, that's a tail. People saying, no, no, it's a third leg. I, I always thought that was just a bit strange. So I, I looked online at different images of this character and I found some different art. I believe one of them in the middle there, that's from uh, the Bionicle comics, I think. Uh, and then the one on the end there is some fan art that kind of looked like it was taking a bit of inspiration from Anubis. Now, I was a big fan of Anubis back in the day. I loved like old ancient Egyptian mythology and stuff like that. Uh, so I thought, okay, let me try and really distill some of those qualities into this revamp here. Uh, and that's what I did. I remember spending a lot of time on this when I was still in uh, high school. Uh, I was very proud and very happy with the end result. I think I spent like sort of I think it was a long weekend I might have spent building it. It was sort of three or four pretty solid days working on it and refining it. Uh, and some stuff I was very proud of was that torso design using Huki Mari's mask. Obviously the mask from this set here. Uh, but I thought that was uh, really clever. It was a great way of kind of tying the color scheme together a little bit uh, and just really filling out the torso. I was, I remember being like, oh, nice work me. Uh, something else I loved was this tail design here using a bunch of CCBS armor pieces. Remember, this was still the early days of CCBS pieces, so it felt very exciting to use those parts. Uh, I also used some of those, um, uh, what are they called, like, the, the yellow, like, shield pieces there uh, on the fan braces or on the lower arms. Uh, those came on, like, the Hero Factory set Meltdown, for example. Uh, that was also a relatively new piece at this point, and I remember actively looking at it and being like, alright, let's try and blend it with some older Bionicle pieces. Feels crazy saying that now because those pieces are you know, pretty old at this point, but back then they were basically brand new. So those are some techniques that I was very happy with. This head design was also very fun. It's pretty similar to how he looks in, uh, it, well, in this uh, original version of him, but uh, yeah, I was trying to distill some more regal qualities. You know, he's the leader of these guys. He's got to look important and grand. Uh, so yeah, elements of Anubis were poured into that, certainly. Um, but no, I, even now, actually, I, I quite like this. I would love, love to revamp the Shadowed One. Uh, that's pretty high on my list of Bionicles to build these days, because looking at this, I'm like, oh, there's some great stuff going on here, but I want to refine certain things, maybe really play with the, the textures and the color blocking a little bit more. Uh, like, I think I do those legs and the feet very differently today, uh, and I'd maybe just tidy up the colors on the torso a little bit more. Uh, but... I think it's great, and look how poseable he is too, uh, like this pose that he's in here. Uh, and I remember being very, very proud because in this image here, he's crossing his hands. And that was something I often struggled to do back in the day when I was building stuff, and it was always something I wanted to do if I could. Uh, and I remember I actually started with the arms when I was building this, the lower arms and the hands there. Uh, and I was like, I won't stop building this hand design until I know he can cross his arms. And I managed to do it. So younger Ben was very, very happy and very proud of that. Uh, and hey, this, I think this, I personally think this mock still holds up today. Uh, maybe a few refinements here and there, but you know, yeah, really like this one. The next Dark Hunter that we have is Mimic. So at the time, after I'd built the Shadowed One, that was the first one I made, I said to myself, you know what, I, I really like Dark Hunters, this is so cool. And at the time I was like actively every day after school reading the Bionicle Wiki, learning about the lore, really like diving in deep. I already knew a fair bit, but I was like, I want to learn all the nitty gritty stuff. And um, Dark Hunters was a thing I was pretty obsessed with. And so I was looking at all the different like models and things for Dark Hunter characters, and then I found the one for Mimic, which even now looking at it, I think is a very, very cool model. Uh, and I said, oh man, I really want to build this. Uh, and so I built Mimic, and then after that, I just kept building Dark Hunters for a good few months. 
Um, obviously, we'll see a bit more of them later. There's a few I haven't put in this video, so maybe we'll see them in a future one if there's interest. Uh, but yeah, I, I loved that head design. I ended up starting with that, and uh, I just sort of did what I wanted to do with the rest of the body. I took notes from the, um, the original, like the torso, for example. Again, at the time, I was really starting to play a lot more with Hero Factory pieces and other modern pieces. And I was like, how can I integrate these into this mock? Uh, so something I was very happy to include was the explode blade piece that's at the very top of his uh, now like staff, uh, the beautiful like yellow and red one that of course came on this set. Yeah, I, I remember that being one of my favorite things about this. Uh, I think there's also a lot of pieces in here in gun metal and uh, other kind of technique pieces as well uh, from Makuta Teradax, who if I'm not mistaken. I think someone gave me like half of that set when I was still in uh, high school and I was like, all right, I'm going to pour all of this into my version of Mimic. I even gave him the uh, Avoki Takanuva silver masks uh, on his hands. Obviously the original one has that, but uh, I remember thinking that was just such a cool design because it is, it's a clever part use for that piece and it looks like fingers. It's really, really cool. Yeah, I, I liked that I added a few more like red spikes and different things here. I think maybe some of the textures are a little bit messy, whereas the original one uh, things are a little bit more unified, uh, although hey, that original one's using a lot of older pieces. Uh, for the time it was built, it's very well done. It's, it still holds up, I think. Yeah, this would be honestly another character I'd love to, to take another stab at today, just to tidy things up a little bit, but I remember being pretty happy with this. I loved this leg design here, using a red mutter torso uh, to form pretty much the bulk of that lower leg there. Might be a little hard to see in these images, but that's how it was built anyway. No, I was. this was one that uh, I just thoroughly enjoyed making, and it's a character I still think looks cool. The third Dark Hunter I want to talk about today is Seeker. So here's my version next to the official version. Uh, essentially what was happening, yeah, I was looking through the wiki, I was even looking through the old Dark Hunter book that had a bunch of like, you know, history about the characters and the different uh, models for them. And I saw this one and I thought, oh, it's pretty cool, uh, but I wanna, I wanna try my own take on it. So I started with the head and I riffed off it a little bit, changed the eye color, changed the way that the, the bottom of the jaw looked. And then I said, all right, you know what? I'm gonna make this like brown and dark orange, because I realized I had a fair bit of that in my collection and I wasn't really doing much with it. So I thought, I'm gonna give him uh, a brand new, cool looking color scheme. Uh, and hey, dark orange and brown, they work together quite nicely. This head design I think is cool. I love those spikes. It looks like he's got a big old mohawk or something. But you know what? It's always exciting to build something that isn't just a, a typical humanoid with two human legs, branching off and doing, you know, crazy, almost spider-like designs like this. That's always a bit of fun. And then we've got uh, like the Civil War poster for Marvel between myself, Mark Cossie, and Seeker here. It's kind of fun. But no, this was another one that, uh, you know, at the time I was... I feel like this was a good time of experimentation for me. I remember just, I was just going from one Dark Hunter to the next, really trying to just pump them out as much as I could in between studying for school and going to school and all of that. And I think it was just a time where I was really trying to experiment with stuff. Uh, you know, like this uh, upper arm design here, using a mutter foot and then branching off that claw piece there. I, I was just trying to try a lot of new techniques and try things I didn't typically do, like a more spider-like design for the legs here. I definitely recommend doing that because I think I learned a lot from doing that when I built this back in the day. Just trying out new things and really just experimenting. Uh, you do learn a lot from doing that, definitely. It's always fun to play with exciting colors like dark orange, which is a little bit more common these days. You know, you got Pahatu G2 who had a lot of dark orange pieces. And then a lot of system sets these days come with dark orange. But back then when Bionicle G1 had very freshly ended, dark orange pieces were harder to come by. Uh, and you know what, I I love it. I love building with weird colors. It's one of my favorite things. Uh, so it was a, a nice treat to be able to do it with this mark here. Um, yeah, I like this one. Again, I, I still think a lot of my uh, techniques could be tidied up here. This torso is quite busy. Uh, the color blocking's a little all over the place, but um, you know what? At the end of the day, man, I had fun building it and looking back on it now, it makes me smile. And I think that's what's important about a mock, whether or not it's good or whether or not it could be improved. Does it bring you joy? That's all that matters. And looking at this now, it still brings me joy. I don't have this built anymore, uh, unfortunately, but um, yeah, I love him. He's cool. So onto the next mock now, this is Lariska. So uh, a lot of people have been building Lariska mocks in the last few years because I believe there was a fanon contest for her. And uh, you might be like, well, the color scheme's a little off because in many depictions of her, she's either like teal 
or uh, dark blue and dark green is kind of the main color scheme for her. But what was funny is when I was building this, I, I believe what happened is I was just you know, reading about Dark Hunters, learning a lot about them. Uh, and then I, I, I read a little bit about Lariska and I'd also uh, recently rebuilt Rudaka. And I thought, oh, you know what? This set's cool, but I'd, I'd love to be able to turn it into something else. And so then when I learned about Lariska, I was like, oh, I may as well just kind of combine the two together, right? Uh, and there weren't really any official images for this character. There was really just lore, no depiction or fan mocks or anything, at least at the time, of course. And I thought, okay, yeah, I'm going to give it my own take. And then I remember building this. And when I posted it, a bunch of people were like, hey, Ben, that's not the color scheme for Lariska. And I realized that I hadn't actually done much research on the character. I just got excited because I was like, yeah, cool. I'll, I'll take these pieces and do that. I'd come up with a fun challenge in my head and I kind of just decided it was going to be this character. I didn't really know anything about them. And then I started reading more about them. I'm like, oh yeah, that's not at all the color scheme that they have. Uh, and so I then very quickly changed it. And I was like, yeah, I, I totally knew that. Um, this is her in like a stealth suit. She's like going on stealth missions. So she's, she's got like silver armor or something. So like she doesn't stand out as much. And then people were like, oh, okay, I guess that makes sense. But I just totally lied. I was like, oh, dang, I didn't even think to read about this. I got too caught up in building. Uh, nothing wrong with that, of course. Building's fun. It's a good thing to do. But uh, don't forget to do your research if you're building something on a canon character. So I've got her with a, an interesting hair design here using this larger claw piece for some hair. Uh, and yeah, obviously you can see some of the, the parallels uh, between this and the set Rudaka because that's essentially what I did. I took the set apart and I transcribed elements to it uh, or took inspiration from Rudaka. I was very happy with this claw design here, uh, especially this pose here of them just staring at their fist, very early mock pages. Uh, uh, just using some of those newer claw pieces that were kind of coming out around that time uh, and popping up very heavily in Hero Factory 2.0 sets. Yeah, I just thought that was a really cool, fun, poseable claw design. Feel free to steal that and put it in your own box if you like it. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a fun one, this one. Oh, I quite like too how I did this uh, foot design here, adding in those uh, Rakshi staff pieces there. I think my idea was I was inspired by like Mandalorians, specifically like Jango Fett, for example, uh, where they do have those little kind of like spikes on the end of their foot so that if they kick someone, it's uh, gonna hurt a little bit more. And I was kind of thinking along those terms. I was like, well, bounty hunters in Star Wars, they've got all these interesting gadgets and different things. How can I add that in on a mock like this? Uh, and that was how I did that. But of course, she's got her two daggers here, like you can see in this image as well. So she's uh, she's ready for combat. All right, and let's finish up with a mock called Insanity. So as I was going through and I was building all of these different Dark Hunters, one of the most exciting things was a bunch of those Dark Hunters, like like it was with Lariska, at least at the time, there weren't any official images of them. Uh, you just had lore. When you looked at the image on the wiki, it would be a big old question mark. And that was a very fun challenge to, to bring the ideas behind that character to life into a physical form. But then I thought, well, you know, I'm building all these canon characters. Why don't I make up some of my own Dark Hunters? So Insanity here, he was one of those. The idea I had for them is that they were this like really deranged character because yeah, a lot of the Dark Hunters, they had some more twisted backstories. Essentially, he would just sort of like stand still like this, kind of in this pose like you see him here and not move. He would be this very sort of strong, silent type. Uh, but then if you messed with him or if he was sent on a specific mission, he would then go crazy and kill people and stuff. Uh, <laughs> very much feels like something a teenager would make. But um, yeah, you can even see in this image here, uh, this is a mock, uh, it was a self mock of someone on mock pages at the time who I believe was called Komart or Komal. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting your name wrong, I'm sure. Um, but uh, that was his self mock that I built and it was him here like trying to interact with this dude and he's like, he's not responding and then suddenly he gets attacked by, uh, by insanity there. Uh, so the idea I had that, yeah, he'd kind of lost his marbles a little bit. He's got really long fingernails now, which he uses as weapons. So I gave him all these different uh, you know, sizes and shapes of silver blade pieces so that it looks like he's got uh, gross looking fingernails that he uses as a weapon. And I tried to pose him in a more kind of hunched position so that he looked a little bit out of it of sorts. Uh, and uh, I gave him uh, that mono eye on his head and used some of those larger CCBS armor shells to make that head design, which I think looks cool. That larger forehead is certainly unique. Uh, and then I gave him a little heart light on his chest there. I always liked the idea of heart lights or arc reactors or whatever you want to call them, just some sort of glowing light on the torso. I remember I had a um, group on mock pages, uh, on the website mock pages where I used to post a lot of these older creations of mine. Uh, you could create groups and then people could you know, post their mocks in it. It was just, yeah, you could talk in the groups and yeah, you could look through the mocks that were posted in the group. So it's kind of a way to get your stuff noticed, all of that sort of thing. But I made a group called Heart Lights for the Win. 
Uh, and so I was like, you can only post mocks in this group if they have heart lights on them. Uh, so it was something that I remember being very excited about at the time. And yeah, other people would be like, oh yeah, I'll put a heart light on my mark and da da da. That was something I remember really enjoying and being like, oh, I have to put one on here. Even though now I would say it almost looks like a second eye to some degree. Maybe it's not the best place to include one. But uh, hey, I think this looks great. I love the spikes on his back as well. Uh, it was uh, one of my own original takes on a Dark Hunter. Maybe this is a character I could revisit. Oh hey, maybe this is a character you could revisit. By all means, if I have any original characters in here or in older uh, episodes of this, you know, looking back at old Mox show that I appear to be doing now, uh, feel free. I'm not going to be offended if you want to build your own take on them. Um, like I said, the, the whole purpose of these videos, of all the videos on my channel, is to inspire you. So if you see something I've built and you've gone, oh, I want to take a stab at that, go ahead. That's the point of this stuff. I'd love to see other people reimagine some of the characters that I built when I was a kid. That would be awesome. Or don't. It's up to you. Seeing this might springboard another mock entirely for you. Whatever. Or you're like, eh, I got no inspiration from this. It was just cool to look at stuff. And I hope that was the case, because looking at old mocks, looking at new mocks, just looking at mocks, it's a fun thing to do. It's how I spend my free time. So, you know, yeah. Hopefully this was enjoyable for you. And, and uh, hey, if you're a veteran of mock pages or older BioTube, older Bionicle community, uh, hopefully this was an interesting uh, flashback to the past. But if not, yeah, I hope you just had fun today. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Happy building, and bye for now.